Coming up on today's Disney Roundup, a virtual queue system has been announced to ride Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure at Avengers Campus, Bette Midler makes the official announcement for a Hocus Pocus sequel, and how long Disney Parks plan to keep the Park Pass reservation system. I have all that and more for you coming up right here on the DRU. To infinity and beyond! I'm in the mood to help you, dude. You ain't never had a friend like me. Hey everyone, Jeff here and welcome to the Disney Roundup where I bring you up to date with all the latest Disney and Disney Parks news each and every single week. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and hit that like button for me and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to receive the Disney Roundup each and every single week. Starting off with Parks News this week, as Walt Disney World has begun to increase its parks capacity and slowly return to normal or how things were before the pandemic, I've seen a lot of people express that they'd like for them to do away with the Park Pass reservation system. Well, in a recent conference, Disney CEO Bob Chapek discussed its future. During this year's J.P. Morgan Global Technology Media and Communications Conference, Shapex spoke on the Park Pass reservation system and how it helped the parks operate safely when reopening. When speaking on the reservation system, Shapex would go on to say that the Disney Park Pass reservation system would remain even following the pandemic. And if you remember too, last year, Parks Chairman Josh Demaro said that he believes it actually leads to a better cast and guest experience. So these things are helping us now, but they are here to stay. However, now with the capacity increase, park pass reservations are still very difficult to get at the current time for day ticket or resort guests unless you plan to go about a month in advance. Currently, annual pass holders have their pickings, but of course, Disney has not started selling new annual passes since the reopening, so it's kind of frustrating now if you're not an AP holder and want to plan something spontaneous a few weeks out. So on the other hand, I do see why they keep the system other than to keep a limit on capacity. I think they use it to their advantage to keep an eye on their guests to see where they're going and when, and of course, keeping track of what they are spending. The advantage I see now though of keeping the park pass reservation system is being able to secure you're in a certain park at a certain date. Take for example, October 1st for the 50th anniversary, Magic Kingdom availability has been gone for months now, as well as Epcot soon after they announced their opening for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. So I like having that security, even if it takes months of planning ahead of time. Let me know what you think in the comments down below though. Now, during the conference, Shapek did give some more details on capacity increase, saying it would continue to increase over the next few months with, quote, low double-digit increases. He did not give a specific current capacity number, but did say that guests may be able to notice more relaxed guidelines come the end of Disney's quarter four in September. After being replaced with cardboard cutouts during their refurbishment, the Donald Panchito and Jose animatronics have returned to Grand Fiesta Tour. Last week, Imagineer Zach Ridley announced on Instagram the return of the three caballeros saying our favorite three feathered friends have once again made their way back to the Grand Fiesta Tour. These figures have a special place in Walt Disney World history having been part of the original opening day attraction Mickey Mouse Review. Donald Panchito and Jose performed abroad for 26 years until the Mickey Mouse Review played its last show to make way for Mickey's Fill Our Magic. As mentioned, during the months that they were gone, Disney had put cardboard cutout flats in their place, so it's great to see them back in their rightful place. Just a little over a week prior to its opening, Disney has released the guide map for Avengers Campus. There are three entrances into the new six acre land where you can enjoy the action with the Avengers and their allies like Iron Man, Black Panther, Black Widow, and more. Sling webs on the first Disney ride through attraction to feature Spider-Man, taste test inventive food and drinks, and become part of a bigger universe. The Avengers Campus guide map can also be found now on Disneyland.com and the official Disneyland mobile app. With the release of the guide map for the new land, Disney also announced that Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, would be utilizing a virtual queue system. Similar to Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, virtual queue enrollment times will be twice daily at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. At the moment, though, guests are not able to obtain both boarding groups for Rise and Web Slingers at the same time. Now on to company news, after making their debut almost 30 years ago, the Sanderson sisters will reunite in a Hocus Pocus sequel. 
It's not just a bunch of hocus pocus, the news is true. Bette Midler, who plays Winifred Sanford, made the official announcement saying, Sisters, it's been 300 years, but we're back. The Sanderson sisters will all reunite for this film. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy will reprise their roles as Winnie, Sarah, and Mary Sanderson. Hocus Pocus 2 follows three young women who accidentally bring the Sanderson sisters back to modern day Salem and must figure out how to stop the child hungry witches from wrecking the new kind of havoc on the world. The movie begins production this fall and is scheduled to make its debut on Disney Plus fall of 2022. Marvel Studios has released the first teaser trailer and new movie poster for their new and upcoming film Eternals. Marvel Studios Eternals welcomes a new team of superheroes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The epic story spanning thousands of years features a group of immortal heroes forced out of the shadows to reunite against mankind's oldest enemy, the Deviants. The third film in the MCU's Phase 4 is set for release November 5th of this year, and if you want to watch the full teaser trailer, I will leave a link to that in the description down below. Now on to Outside the Parks news, as the phase reopening of the Disneyland Resort continues to move forward, the Disneyland Hotel has an official reopening date for this summer. The Disneyland Hotel will be reopening on July 2nd, 2021 with limited capacity. Reopening with the resort will also be Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar. It was also announced that starting June 15th, Disneyland Resort will no longer be doing temperature checks for guests or cast members prior to entry. Of course, this also just recently ended at Walt Disney World, but with the addition of being able to remove face coverings outside. Disneyland Resort has not announced any further updates regarding that as of yet, Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned though and I will let you know all of the latest reopening news happening at the Disneyland Resort. With room refurbishment still continuing at Disney's Contemporary Resort, Scrim has appeared now on all rooms inside the main tower. Weeks ago, when beginning refurbishment on some of its rooms, Disney had placed Scrim on one half of the rooms inside the main tower at the Contemporary. Now spotted by Blog Mickey, all rooms inside the main tower of the Contemporary are now covered. Refurbishment for the rooms first started back in early April and is expected to be completed for the start of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary in October. While it is expected that these are being re-imaged to Incredibles rooms, Disney has still yet to confirm if they are as of yet. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned though and I'll let you know when the announcement is made. Guests visiting Walt Disney World in early 2022, be aware that the Disney Skyliner will be going under some expected downtime. Disney has stated from January 23rd through January 28th, 2022, the Disney Skyliner service between Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, Disney's Riviera Resort, and Epcot will be out of operation for refurbishment. During this time, Disney bus transportation will be provided for guests to Epcot. Friendship Boat Service is also available for Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disney's Boardwalk Resorts, and Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resorts. With such an early announcement, the downtime is assumed to be just for general maintenance and refurbishment. Another Magic Kingdom resort looks to be receiving some room refurbishments as it's been reported that the Grand Floridian will be receiving more DVC villas. According to DVCnews.com, Disney Vacation Club has said that they plan to convert over 200 hotel rooms to deluxe studio villas. They say that the proposed project will transform Big Pine Key at Grand Floridian into approximately 200 resort studios, accommodating up to five guests. The current projected opening for the new DVC section at the Grand Floridian is summer of 2022. All right, everyone. Well, that's all I have for you for this week's episode of the Disney Roundup. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit that like button for me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to receive the Disney Roundup each and every single week. That's all I have for you for this week. Until next time, we'll see you on the DRU.